hey, check this out. I got some new equipment. It's not a new telescope. It's not a new camera. It's a new set of wheels. JP Astro guy is gone mobile. This video adventure chronicles my first experience taking a road trip driving our new car. Together with my son, we traveled to an Izu highland area called Shimino Mori Ukihashi. Located in the northern and central part of the Izu Peninsula, we visited this parkland area because the location was a place he wanted to explore. Actually, that weekend was not particularly good for imaging due to the cloud forecast, but I brought along my astrophotography equipment anyways, just in case. As you can see here, Google Maps and other automated translation software give a very strange translation for the phrase Shimi no Mori Ukihashi. It comes out as Forest Pontoon of Citizens. So, when you see that strange title on the subsequent maps, you now know why. It appears this forested parkland is located within the boundaries of Izu no Kuni City. This is where the place is located. It is only accessible by car. The map shows the travel route we took, well, kind of. We got a little lost trying to get out of Yokohama. All in all, it ended up taking about two hours travel time due to the city traffic and one early wrong turn on the highway. Neither my son or I are familiar with highways and roads around any place in Japan since our life so far has been almost exclusively dominated by public transportation. So when the Navi system forced us on some ridgeline parkway, we simply followed the advice. The drive was winding and challenging along some mountaintop crests, as you can see here. This segment of road had a surprising number of pull-offs for parking and resting that, in my single-minded brain, appeared to be potentially nice deep-sky imaging sites high above the cities located down below. On these maps, yellow corresponds to Bordel Class 4 territory. Let's zoom in closer and closer to Shimino Mori Ukihashi. It is located here at these coordinates. Interestingly, it is not all that far away from the coastal town of Izutaga where I did some astrophotography before on some seaside ocean piers. Those Izutaga adventures were published in recent Astrophotography Japan episodes 45 and 52. You are probably curious about my new car, so let me briefly tell you about it. Here it is, the Suzuki Spatia Gear. It is a Keiji Dosha or translated that means a light vehicle. This category of vehicle is rather unique to Japan and it is strictly controlled in terms of engine size and vehicle dimensions. 660cc is the maximum displacement size of the engine combustion chamber. Yeah, you heard that right, 0 0.6 liters. But as you may know, Companies like Honda and Suzuki have been making motorcycle and other small engines since they were founded and are considered the best in the world at small engine technologies. Add in a turbocharger, small wheels, and keep the car very lightweight, and you would be surprised at the power. What I bought was the 2024 newest model of the Spatia Gear. It comes loaded with standard upgrades that are considered options in other K-Car designs but I spared no expense on getting every option available that I will tell you about another time. 
One thing I have to say, however, is that Suzuki reeled me in hook, line, and sinker with their advertisements and marketing positioning of this vehicle. It is designed and targeted toward outdoorsmen like campers and hikers. You would be amazed at how spacious and peppy it feels when city driving, even with four Japanese adults in the car. Of course, I did not push it hard on the long uphill mountain roads, but that is why I got the turbocharger option for a little extra power. With the two rear seats folded down, all my Astro gear and my son's other miscellaneous gear fit easily into the rear of the car for the drive to Izu. We arrived right about sundown, and much to my surprise, the cloud cover appeared to be diminishing around nightfall. So I immediately began setting up my astrophotography rig behind the vehicle. Since I did not have to carry all this equipment on public transportation, I could bring my largest refractor telescope, the SV50380 ED from Serboni. My imaging was done with the ASI 533 MC Pro color camera. These images shown here, taken with the Milky Way in the background, were unstaged. My power tank and other equipment had running lights that gently bathed everything in a combination of red and blue illumination across the imaging site. It was barely visible to the eye, but readily apparent in these 15 second exposures I took to highlight the Milky Way. Oh, I never mentioned about my imaging target for this night. It was going to be NGC 6914, a small bluish reflection nebula hidden among a sea of reddish hydrogen emission clouds. Here is a Stellarium screenshot to show you the expected FOV and framing. This target wasn't selected until the last moment due to various imaging site constraints. The parking site was surrounded by trees, forcing only high in the sky targets and the clouds disappeared only between 11.30 p.m. and about 1.30 a.m. I got lucky, having just enough time to polar align and execute the imaging plan described here. The waxing crescent moon had already set at the time of imaging, so that was no issue. Using two different filters, I captured 105 usable subframes, that I combined and stacked together to yield 85 minutes of total integration time. Unfortunately, that was not much data, but I feel the image came out remarkably well regardless. The reflection nebulae are designated as VDB 131 and 132. They are approximately 6,000 light years away, embedded in a larger nebula cloud cataloged as NGC 6914 in the constellation of Cygnus. For fun, over three weeks later, back in Yokohama, I had the urge to image this target again, this time using my newly purchased FMA 180 astrograph lens from Ascar. On this night of July 21st, I set up my rig in the backyard of my home and captured nearly five hours of data. The only difference between this imaging rig and the one I used previously in Izu is the telescope. I went from using my most powerful telescope in Izu to a very wide field telescope in my backyard. This slide shows the expected fields of view on the Stellarium Night Sky Simulation software. The camera was the same, the ASI 533 MC Pro color camera, so the expected resolution would drop from about 1.4 arc seconds per pixel to 4.3 arc seconds per pixel in the case of the wide field image. Here is the rig in my backyard on the night of July 21st. And by the way, the field of view difference is 87 arc minutes for the Zviboni SV50380 ED scope versus 216 arc minutes for the Ascar FMA 180 scope. The former being nicely sampled, while the latter being severely undersampled due to the larger pixel size of the camera. 
and here is the integrated image taken in my backyard in Yokohama. It contained 280 minutes of data collected exclusively using the Optolong Alextreme filter on a night with a 20% waning crescent moon located over 90 degrees away and just barely rising in the east at the time of the imaging. Frankly, I was surprised by this image. It turned out very beautiful and detailed, even under the Bordel class 7 to 8 skies here in Yokohama. Here it is shown side by side with the image I took previously in Shimino Mori Ukihashi Park in Izu, which had much less integration time due to the weather circumstances. If you display the two images to scale, they would look like this. And if you superimpose the ADED image on the FMA 180 image, you get this. Let me flip back and forth a few times to show you the comparison. Okay, here are the two images I took of NGC 6914 one last time side by side. If you're watching this video and only interested in deep sky images, then let me thank you for tuning in to Astrophotography Japan. And for those of you that have a few more minutes to watch the completion of my travel adventure, thanks for sticking around. Let me jump back to Shimino Mori Ukihashi on June 28th. I stayed up nearly all night while imaging, and my son caught a few hours of sleep in the car. If you flatten the front passenger seat, it is possible to stretch out completely in that tiny little vehicle. Then at the dawn light, he went out hunting for Kuwagata beetles, and it was my turn to sleep in the car for a few morning hours. But we departed around 8 a.m. and actually drove a little further south to Shuzenji. This is a district with a small city accessible by train. We had visited here before. They have a beautiful winery, craft beer brewery, hot springs, a culture slash amusement like park, and fabulous natural scenery. My son did a little more insect hunting here for Kuwagata beetles, and I tagged along. Japan is a country rich in fresh water during every season. Even in the summer, water is seldom a problem for farmers. A few growing seasons for rice can be squeezed into a single calendar year. Look at all that fresh, clean mountain spring water just gushing down the hillside, emptying into the local river. When we drove to Shuzenji, we parked our car in the parking lot of a famous landmark, Joran no Taki, or Joran Falls. The falls was located in a small gorge that was accessible by paths and descending stairs. You could hear the rush of the water and rumble of the falls as you got closer. It was a beautiful wild nature scene with crystal clear waters and a rocky brook that swiftly flowed downhill off into the distance embraced exclusively by Mother Nature. Do you know what this is? Protected by barbed wire fences? It is a natural water wasabi farm. A famous food product of this location, I am guessing. Well, that is it. It was still morning, but we tracked back up to the car, grabbed a few refreshing drinks, and drove home along an alternative route that was all highway back to Yokohama. No more mountains, just smooth sailing and easy driving. The new car met all my expectations. It was a relaxing and entertaining trip that hopefully I can experience many more times in the future at interesting new places for astrophotography. Stay tuned for that. Here in Japan, I am JP Astro Guy. My name is Paul Cheesegel, 
and thank you sincerely for watching Astrophotography Japan. Please like and subscribe and help me grow the channel.